Uh, good afternoon, uh, Joshua Hart, Director of StopSmartMeters.org. Um, today we heard compelling testimony from several dozen speakers uh, telling the Commission about the health impacts that they're suffering from smart meters. And uh, to this date, the uh, CPUC has uh, directed concerns about uh, levels of, of microwave exposure, uh, referring to FCC standards, which, in my understanding, do not take into account non-thermal uh, impacts of, of radiation. Now, as you know, two days ago, the National Institutes of Health uh, uh, released a study uh, published in the Journal of the American Medical Association that really uh, is a, a smoking gun showing that non-thermal impacts are real and do have impacts on uh, the functioning of the human brain. Uh, now what is the CPUC's position, given this new evidence and compelling evidence of non-thermal impacts, uh, which seems, would seem to confirm the uh, health impacts being reported by thousands of California residents? All right. This was my first meeting where these kinds of, uh, this kind of testimony was presented. I know it's happened in the past, but, but I wasn't here. I have met with with some of the folks who share your concerns and will be meeting with more. At my understanding, the commission does not have an open proceeding on this at present, but that's one of the things that I'll be uh, discussing with my colleagues is whether that that needs to happen. Uh, you know, for me, this is fairly new. I think Commissioner Simon has some thoughts as well. Yes, um, I, I don't have comments, Josh, on the, the actual report itself. Um, I, I, I do have concerns uh, that there is a growing uh, movement regarding uh, the radio frequencies that are transmitted by smart meters. And I, as, as I expressed separately to uh, President Peavy and Commissioner Florio, um, I would support the idea of a docket opened to uh, through workshops and other processes to try to develop this dialogue in a way where we can have a reasonable outcome. We have over uh, 10 million smart meters that have been installed in California. Uh, the installation was a result of proceedings and a number of hearings. So there was clearly a due process and an adjudicatory function that occurred. Uh, but there are now concerns about the methodology that's being used to transmit the information. I think we should look at that, as particularly as, we, as we're expanding the smart grid to smart appliances. We have uh, ve electric vehicles that will be coming into the grid that will play a very important role. And whatever health concerns are out there, I think need to be addressed in a way that's more productive than what we're experiencing now in the public comment, where we're seeing many of the same speakers over and over again. I will say that there have been smaller uh, groups of, who have interest in activity stakeholders that come before the Commission that we have opened dockets for in a number of areas uh, that are sometimes research oriented. So I would not be opposed to looking at uh, the options that are available for those who have concerns about their health. I cannot express the outcome. You know, that, that clearly that would be in the form of some folk that would come before this Commission. But I think there should be more uh, organized dialogue on this issue. Would you support public uh, hearings on the health issues? Well, that's uh, exactly what I'm saying. That's actually what I'm saying. Okay. Is I, I would rather have public hearings on this subject than, and, and, I, and I welcome public comment at our meetings, as all commissioners do, but I would like to see the, the comment flowing in some way where we have some outcome one way or the other. I am opposed to a moratorium. I, I, I would make that very clear, and, and I understand the Huffman bill uh, which offers a, an opt-out for uh, fiber optics or other communication uh, instrumentalities, uh, it, it has a moratorium built in as well. And, I, it, you know, and I, I remind the public, again, that the installation of smart meters was a part of a proceeding, a number of proceedings that occurred before this commission, which had public hearings and had an opportunity for the advocacy on a number of topics. Be that as it may, if there is a legitimate public concern, then I think it is the obligation of this agency to direct this concern in a way where there can be deliberation in a more productive fashion. Right now, I think we're doing the deliberation through the press, and, I, and I've never felt that that is the appropriate mechanism for due process. But we should continue installing even Mr. though people Florida. are getting hurt? Excuse me, you've had two questions. Some reporters here ask questions. Um, Ha, 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 ha.
Uh, that wasn't planned, but thank you for coming. I don't have any other questions. Email me and we will get the answers to you. We're asking too much, too difficult questions. We're going to pull this off. Hi, I'm Angie Minkin. I'm uh, Commissioner Flores and I'm Chief of Staff. Oh, I didn't realize that you were asking to come on a particular application. When we hear from the NTSB in their final report, we'll have a lot more information about what can be done to prevent this from happening again. I need to get you over there. Uh, okay. Sorry. Can I just quickly ask you a question while we're walking? Sure. Um, if I was a new commissioner and on the CPUC and heard the three dozen uh, heartfelt testimonies about the impacts of smart meters, um, I'd want some questions answered. And so uh, I'm wondering I'd, if you... I'd like to get that report. Yeah. Yes. Do you support uh, hearings at the at the state level on, on this issue? Uh, I, I so people, the public can... I'm thinking about that right now, is what can we do to, to more effectively address this issue? And, yeah, we'll be discussing this over the coming days, uh, how to move forward. Okay, thank you very much.